everybody, this is Chris from Project Option, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about one of the most popular volatility products, VXX. So this video is going to be dedicated to what is VXX and how does it work. So let's get right into it. So volatility trading has become very popular in recent years, and many products have been launched to help investors gain exposure to changes in the market's implied volatility, which is the VIX index. Now, there's just one problem, and that's that the VIX index is not directly investable. So to solve this problem, many traders turn to VXX. Now, VXX is a volatility product that attempts to track the VIX index through the daily percentage returns of the near-term VIX futures. Now, that's because near-term VIX futures are sensitive to changes in the VIX index. So if the VIX index rises, those near-term VIX futures are expected to increase as well. And since VXX tracks the returns of those near-term VIX futures, VXX should increase in price. Now, on the other hand, if the VIX index decreases, those near-term VIX futures are expected to lose value, and therefore VXX should decrease. So, to get a little more specific, VXX tracks the daily percentage returns of the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index, which tracks a portfolio of near-term VIX futures with a weighted average time to maturity of 30 days. So let's go ahead and take a look at a graph of the daily returns of VXX compared to the S&P 500 VIX Short-Term Futures Index. All right, so in this graph, we're looking at the daily percentage returns of VXX, which is that dark line, and the daily percentage returns of the short-term VIX futures index, which is the green line. So as we can see here, the daily percentage returns between VXX and the VIX short-term futures index track each other very closely. Now, as you'll notice, there are some small discrepancies on this plot between the two returns, and that's because VXX closes at 4 p.m. Eastern on each trading day, while the VIX futures close at 4.15 Eastern. So after VXX closes at 4 p.m., there's an additional 15 minutes for those near-term VIX futures to change price. And therefore, if those near-term VIX futures experience a price movement in those last 15 minutes after VXX has closed, then there will be a discrepancy between the returns on the following trading day. So now that you know what VXX is and what it tracks, let's go ahead and talk about the expected performance of VXX when the VIX futures are in various states. Now, when VIX futures are in contango, that means that the VIX index is at a level below the near-term VIX futures. Now, as time passes, all VIX futures contracts will converge towards the index. So that means if the VIX index is below those near-term VIX futures prices, then as time passes, those near-term VIX futures will lose value as they converge towards the VIX index. Now that assumes that the VIX does not rise. Now since VXX tracks the performance of the near-term VIX futures, VXX loses value as those near-term futures get pulled lower towards the VIX index. And that's because those VIX futures are going to be experiencing negative percentage returns on a daily basis as they converge towards the VIX index. Now, since those near-term VIX futures will have negative percentage returns, VXX will also have negative percentage returns on a daily basis. So let's go ahead and take a look at a period of time in which the VIX futures are in contango, and then let's see how VXX performs as those near-term VIX futures converge towards the VIX index. All right, so in this graph, we're looking at a period of time in which the VIX index is at a level below the VIX futures, which means that the VIX futures are in a state of contango. Now, the index that VXX tracks keeps a weighted portfolio of near-term VIX futures. Now, that means the first and second month VIX futures. So in the first portion of this graph, to the left of that blue dashed line, the VXX performance is going to be tied to the January and February VIX futures because those are the first and second month VIX futures. So as we can see here, the VIX index is trading between 12 and 14 in that first portion of the graph. And as we can see, the January and February VIX futures start between 14 and $16. So as the VIX index remains low over this period, we can see that the January and February VIX futures are slowly losing value as they converge towards the VIX index. Now, as we can see, VXX also decreases in value since VXX's performance is tied to the performance of those near-term VIX futures. 
Now, after that January VIX future settles, which is the blue dashed line, then the index that VXX tracks will now be tracking the February and March VIX futures. Now, as we can see, the VIX index remains low over the time period, and we can see that the February and March VIX futures steadily lose value as they converge towards the VIX index. Now, as we can see, VXX also decreases over that period because VXX tracks the performance of those near-term VIX futures. So this is just an example of how when the VIX index is low and the VIX futures are in a state of contango, which means the VIX futures trade at a premium to the VIX index, if the VIX index does not rise, those near-term VIX futures are going to decay in value as they converge towards the VIX. Now, since those near-term VIX futures are losing value, that means VXX is also losing value because the performance of VXX is tied to the daily percentage returns of those near-term VIX futures. All right, now we're going to look at VXX performance when the VIX futures are in backwardation. Now, when the VIX futures are in backwardation, that means that the VIX index is at a level greater than the near-term VIX futures. Now, as time passes, the near-term the near-term VIX futures will appreciate in value as they converge towards the VIX index, and that assumes that the VIX index does not fall. So, when the VIX index is higher than the VIX futures, as time passes, those VIX futures will appreciate in value because they need to converge to the VIX index by the time of their settlement. Now, since VXX tracks the performance of the near-term VIX futures, VXX gains value as the as the near-term futures get pulled higher towards the VIX index. So let's go ahead and take a look at a period of time in which the VIX futures are, are in backwardation and then look at VXX's performance over that time period. Alright, so in this graph we're looking at the October and November VIX futures, which at the time were the near-term VIX futures, and then we're comparing those price movements to the changes in VXX, and we can also see the VIX index. So as we can see in the first portion of this graph, the VIX futures are actually in contango, but the VIX index is creeping higher and higher, and so are the near-term VIX futures. And as we can see, VXX's value is also creeping higher. Now in the shaded region of this graph on the very right-hand side, we can see that the VIX index surges in value and rises from 15 all the way up to 25. Now with it, it pulls the October and November VIX futures because remember, if the VIX index is higher than the VIX futures, then those near-term VIX futures will converge towards the VIX index as time passes. Now, when the VIX index is higher than those VIX futures, they will appreciate in value as they are pulled towards the VIX index. Now, as we can see here, as those near-term VIX futures rise in value, VXX does as well. So this is just a great example to show that when the VIX index is trading at a higher level than the near-term VIX futures, VXX can perform substantially well because as those near-term VIX futures get pulled higher towards the VIX index, VXX will be appreciating as well. Now, this assumes that the VIX index does not fall from its current level and that it remains elevated. Alright, so now that you know how VXX performs when the VIX futures are in contango and backwardation, let's talk about how often the VIX futures have been in contango and backwardation since 2009, which is the time in which VXX launched. So to quantify contango and backwardation in a simple manner, we're going to take the front month VIX future and subtract the VIX index from it. So any, any positive value means that the front month VIX future is trading at a premium to the VIX index, and that means that the VIX futures are in contango. Now anytime the front month VIX future minus the VIX index is a negative value, that's an indication that the VIX index is higher than the front month VIX future, which is an indication that the VIX futures are in backwardation. So as we can see here, the VIX futures have been in contango a majority of the time since 2009, and very rarely go into backwardation, and when they do, it typically is short-lived. So since we know VXX performs poorly when the VIX futures are in contango, let's go ahead and take a look at how VXX has performed since it launched in 2009. So in this graph, we're looking at the split adjusted price of VXX from January 2009 all the way until present day. So VXX's split adjusted price going all the way back to its inception date comes out to around $25,000. Now, as I'm recording this, VXX is trading right around $15, which means since its inception date, VXX has lost more than 99% of its value. 
Now that's because the VIX futures are frequently in contango, and when the VIX futures are in contango over prolonged periods of time, those near-term VIX futures steadily lose value as they converge towards the VIX index. And as we know, that leads to poor performance in VXX. So does this mean you should short VXX? Well, not necessarily because when volatility does rise and the VIX index surges higher, VXX can increase substantially and if you're short, that is not a situation you want to be in. So we would approach VXX with caution from the short side. Now, anytime we approach VXX, we do so in a limited risk manner and we do that through buying puts, buying put spreads, or selling call spreads, as those are all much safer strategies than shorting naked calls or the stock outright. Alright, so let's quickly recap what you've learned in this video. So first and foremost, the VIX index is not directly investable, but there are volatility products that attempt to track the performance of short-term changes in the VIX, and the VXX ETN is one such product. Now VXX tracks the S&P 500 VIX short-term futures index, which tracks the two nearest term VIX futures contracts with a weighted average time to maturity of 30 days. Now when the VIX futures are in contango, which means the VIX index is below the VIX futures, VXX tends to perform poorly as the near-term VIX futures lose value as they're pulled lower towards the VIX index. Now on the other hand, when the VIX futures are in backwardation, which means the VIX index is above the near-term VIX futures, VXX can rise substantially as the near-term VIX futures appreciate as they're pulled higher towards the VIX index. Now of these two conditions, Contango is present most of the time, which means most of the time VXX is trending lower. Now as we've discussed, since VXX, VXX's inception date in January of 2009, VXX has lost over 99% of its value when adjusting for all of the splits. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a ton about VXX. If you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on that circle on the bottom left. And if you want to check out some more implied volatility-related videos, click on the video on the right.